Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last. <laughs> Drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Alice. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, our happy postman, Mel Blank, Elvia Allman, Verna Felton, Lorene Tuttle, and the ladies of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Only two more shopping days till Easter. And if your husband hasn't kicked in with the money for that new Easter hat, you better start doing some tall hinting. But first, come along to the Burns house and watch a couple of experts at work. Gracie can out-hint any wife, and George can out-ignore any husband. Good morning, Gracie. Breakfast ready? All ready, dear. In my Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it. You seem happy this morning. Well, what woman wouldn't be happy married to you, George? Yeah, I guess you're right <laughs> <laughs> Calling you, George, reminds me of a slip I made yesterday I signed my name, Mrs. G. Burns And this woman who was with me said, what does the G stand for? And before I thought, I said, generous <laughs> <laughs> Generous, huh? In my Easter bonnet, with all the frills of Pass the bacon Yes, dear Oh, uh, by the way, have you seen the good news in the paper? It looks like income taxes are going to be cut way down. Now you'll just have scads of money. Yeah, I'll have so much money, I won't know what to do with it. In my Easter bonnet, <laughs> all the bills upon it. Pass the egg. Yes, dear. Notice the way I colored the eggshells this morning? Blue and pink and speckled. Yes, they're pretty, but what's the idea? To remind you of something that's coming. Something that's coming? Mm hmm Let's see, eggs make me think of hens. Mm hmm And hens... Uh-oh, your mother's coming. <laughs> no, dear. In my Easter bonnet with all the Pass bells about... the toast. About... Yes, dear. Say, you know, I just thought of something. What? Sunday is Easter. No! <laughs> yes, uh, we'll want to be in the parade, won't we? Well, yes, we will. Here, let me get out my billfold. Why, George, whatever for... Well, we'll want to look our best, won't we? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, here. Take this dollar and get my suit pressed. <laughs> George, wait. Before you put the lock back on your billfold... Yes? I, one of the most important things on Easter is a pretty hat. Oh, and now, sure. if you could What's see... What's the matter with me? Here I am talking about getting my suit pressed. You'll need some more money. Well, sure. Here's, a, here's another dollar. Have my hat cleaned and blocked. <laughs> I'll just have it cleaned. You block it every time you put... Oh, Gracie, let's not lose our head. Uh, George, darling, I'd like to have a pretty hat for Easter, too. Well, here's another dollar. Have yours cleaned and blocked, too. <laughs> well, I can't have last year's Easter hat cleaned and blocked. It's covered with fruit. Well, have it cleaned and sprayed. <laughs> no, you don't understand. The fruit is all faded and withered. Well, use a little fertilizer on it. <laughs> oh, please, dear, don't force me to wear last year's monstrosity. Who's going to know whether it's last year's monstrosity or this year's monstrosity? <laughs> oh, now, Judge, please give me the money now, for Now, this... look, Gracie, you can say... Come sa in. Hi, Burns, what's doing? Oh, we're having a little argument, Phil. What about? Well, I don't want to be seen in the Easter parade with an old, out-of-date monstrosity. Leave George home. <laughs> You're a riot. <laughs> Bill, when I said an out-of-date monstrosity, I meant last year's Easter hat. George won't give me the money for a new one. Why not? Hasn't he been told he can't take it with him? Yeah, he's been told that, but he wants to experiment. <laughs> Never mind the smart cracks, young lady. Not gonna throw money away on a silly hat. You think you're married to the pot of gold? She's not sure about the color, but the shape's right. <laughs> 
I'm going in the den and leave you comics without a straight man. <laughs> and you don't get an Easter hat, Gracie. Times are hard and I can't afford it. Gee whiz, so he won't give you money for a hat. Have you tried flattery, Gracie? Ah, uh, that doesn't work anymore, Bill. George is wise to flattery. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try it. Oh, okay. But you'll see, it won't work. Um, George? Yes? You're the youngest, handsomest, kindest, most talented, best-built, most romantic husband in the world. No, huh? No. <laughs> oh, thanks anyway. You're welcome. Now, you see, Bill? Yeah. See, I wonder if it'll do any good. Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Thank you, Mr. Postman. Oh, hello, Mr. Goodwin. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Uh, Mr. Postman, did your wife get money out of you for an Easter hat? Oh, yes. Oh, how, how did she do it? By promising me a kiss. Really? Yes. She said if I refused to give her the money, she'd kiss me. <laughs> I'd rather take a beating. Bad kisser, huh? Homeliest I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, Mr. Postman, if you feel that way, why did you marry her? Well, it was the year Roosevelt ran against Hoover. Yes? When I make a bet, I pay off. <laughs> well, this isn't getting me an Easter hat. I guess I'll have to use my club to get the money out of George. Oh, don't beat him with a club. That's cruel. No, I meant the club I belong to, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. I'll turn those girls loose on George. Beat him with a club. It's kinder. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. You remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Rockabye Baby. Say, I'd bet you'd find this one way out front if the small fry had a hit parade of their own, Meredith. And who's to say they haven't, Bill? It plays a coast-to-coast -coast nursery network every night at sundown, or thereabouts, with Mom featured as MC and the Sandman always giving his usual dependable performance. All for the pleasure of some sleepy-eyed kid whose applause is a sleepy smile. Yes, lullaby time means many precious things to all of us, all right? Young and old alike. Most of all, perhaps, those moments of peace and contentment that reflect so deeply the meaning of our American scene. And because it offers its own full measure of contentment, Maxwell House coffee belongs to the American scene, too. Here in America, we've made coffee our favorite drink. And today, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. It's Maxwell House wherever you go. Flavor explains this overwhelming preference, that good to the last drop Maxwell House flavor that results from the skillful blending of these carefully selected Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice coffees for vigor. and Bucaramanga's for full body. Adding up to coffee you get at its flavor peak. So friends, why not enjoy the finest in coffee drinking pleasure? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Well, Gracie was unable to get George to buy her new Easter hat, so the minute he left the house, she called in the ladies of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society for a council of war. Poor George. In a bar, they'd refuse to give him more than two zombies. But Gracie's going to hit him with a whole house full. And here they are. Well, I'm so glad you got here. Now, quiet, girls. Quiet. 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 Come to order, please. 
And you I all know. know what a hussy she is. Oh, really, Blanche, when a special meeting of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society is called, we should behave with dignity and not stoop to gossip. Who's the hussy? <laughs> Clara Bagley. I can't understand why we ever took that woman into our club. I heard that, Blanche Morton. Why, Clara, darling, I didn't see you come in. <laughs> How dare you call now, me... Now, Clara, that's enough. You came in late, and you know very well that any member does that at her own risk. <laughs> now, please, Clara, when Blanche was late last month and heard you call her a fat frump, she was very nice about it. Now, apologize for making a scene. Okay. I apologize, fat frump. <laughs> I accept, Huzzy. Now, there. That's the real uplift spirit. Now, before I explain the purpose of this meeting, we'll have the roll call. Blanche Morton. Here. Clara Bagley. Here. Catherine Conway. Here. Meredith Wilson. Present. <laughs> I'll never get used to him at these meetings. <laughs> well, that's just silly, Catherine. It's been over a year since we made Meredith an honorary woman. <laughs> yes, and I've become thoroughly adjusted to womanhood. Good. <laughs> Although I admit I still feel just a little conspicuous in the pool at the YWCA. <laughs> We're dying to know why you called a meeting, Gracie. Uh, can't we skip the rest of the roll call? Well, all right, Blanche. Now, you girls are here because I need your help in a crisis. George refuses to buy me an Easter hat. <gasps> oh, oh, I see. Oh, 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 very oh, ideal. Isn't Karen. that just like a man? So <laughs> <laughs> far... Every method has failed, but you may have tried some fresh methods on your husbands that I could use on George. In other words, you furnish the new tricks and I furnish the old dog. <laughs> well, we're with you, Grace. Oh, we yeah. certainly are. Yeah, we will. Uh, Blanche, uh, did you get money for an Easter hat from Harry? Yes, and a new frying pan, too. Oh? How? I slugged him with the old one. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't strike George. Too brutal? Too brittle. <laughs> he is sort of puny. Clara, did you get half money out of Joe? Oh, sure. No trouble at all. You know, Joe's the affectionate type. Until he agreed to give me the money, I wouldn't let him kiss me. Oh. Well, that wouldn't mean much to George. Some husband's kisses get better, but his just get higher. <laughs> higher? Yes. His aim's not what it used to be. First it was his lips, my lips, and then my cheek, and then my forehead. Well, where is he now? Well, since last October, he missed me altogether. <laughs> my, you're really in trouble. Catherine, did you get Dick to loosen up? Oh, yes, I got him over a barrel. I found out that he took his secretary to dinner one night. He gave me the money to keep peace in the family. Oh, but I'd never find my George chasing after a woman. He doesn't have the desire, the inclination, the wind. <laughs> uh, what did he say when you asked him for money? Oh, he said he was too poor to throw money away on a hat, and that he couldn't afford it because times were hard, and he said, that, girls, I've got it. We'll shame George into giving me the money. Well, we'll hurt his pride. Now, here's the plan. At three o'clock sharp, I'll have George in the living room. You girls come in one at a time, and then you pretend that you're bringing me What time is it, dear? Exactly three o'clock. Oh, good. Answer the door. <laughs> Answer the door? Nobody buzz. There must be something wrong with my ears. Come in. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, Mrs. Morton. I brought you poor people a bundle of old clothes. <laughs> <laughs> poor people? Yes. The news is all over town that you're poverty-stricken. Oh, dear. And I thought it was just a family secret. Uh, oh, you poor, brave little thing, you. Going through life without a stitch on your back. <laughs> yes. 
There wouldn't be a stitch on me anywhere if I hadn't had my appendix out. <laughs> well, let me in on this. What's going on here? here? Take these clothes, Gracie. Here's a dress I don't need. Look, George, a dress for me. And here's one of my old corsets. <laughs> Look, something for you, too. <laughs> and here... Here's one of my husband's old suits for Mr. Burns, too. But we're not poor. Where did you ever get the idea that we... Oh, hello, folks. Well, hello, Mrs. Bagley. Don't get up, Mr. Burns. I, I know how weak you must be. <laughs> weak? Yes, from hunger. I heard about the fix you're in, so I brought over some soup. Soup? Oh, thank you, Clara. Yes. We don't need any soup, Mrs. Bagley. We got plenty of soup. The Salvation Army got here first? <laughs> yeah, with hot soup. Yeah, Love soup that's hot. Clara, it's just his pride. What kind of soup did you bring? Chicken. With noodles? Yes. Oh, George, did you hear that? We can have the soup tonight and the noodles tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Gracie, whoever told me... Come in. Oh, you... I heard the awful news. Now, see here, Mrs. Conway. I'm not a wealthy woman, but I can always scrape together a few pennies for the needy. Here, take this quarter. Oh, <laughs> bless you, Catherine. Mrs. Conway. How did it uh, happen, uh, Gracie? Your husband's been on the radio for years. <laughs> Didn't he save any money? Not a cent. He's told thousands of jokes, but he never laid a nest egg. <laughs> oh, how terrible! Wait a minute, girls. Girls, wait a minute. Girls. Girls. Wait a minute! I have to make myself for Jack Benny to be heard. Now, Gracie, get these dames straight about that crazy rumor. Tell them we're not broke. Now, dear, it's no disgrace. What do you mean it's no disgrace? And it doesn't matter to me. I still love you. Girls, one, two. La dee da. What is this going to be? Other women may walk in their sable and mink with pheasant to eat and champagne to drink. We're at the Jefferson again. But I will wear rags and on crumbs I will dine. And stay with that shabby old husband of mine. <laughs> Gracie, I, I, I... What if the house is as cold as a stone? What if one tattered garment is all that I own? What if wolves at our door are waiting in line? I still have that barefooted husband of mine. <laughs> Gracie, I... Look, girls, girls, stop with that la de da <laughs> I can't afford to have a rumor going around that I'm broke. Gracie, what did you plan to spend on an Easter hat? Oh, about $20. Here's 25 That ought to show these friends of yours up. Well, uh, better make it 30 I have other friends, too. <laughs> All right, take 30 Oh, thank you, George. Well, girls, as long as you're here, let's go in the den and have a nice visit. <laughs> oh, okay. I wonder if I've been had. Meredith Wilson's orchestra, it's a good day.
finally gave Gracie the money for an Easter hat, huh, George? Well, gee, Bill, I had to. Rumor got around that we were destitute. Neighbor women started bringing me old clothes and soup and money. No fooling. Yeah. Imagine offering us charity. Mrs. Morton even had the nerve to bring me one of her husband's old cast-off suits. Here, look at it. <laughs> hey, George, that doesn't look bad on you. <laughs> really? No. Oh. Of course, I just tried it on for a gag. Mm -hmm. Don't intend to keep it. Well, then why have you made those... <laughs> hey, why'd you make those chalk marks where you want it altered? <laughs> To be. Yes. Well, those aren't chalk marks, Bell. I spilled some soup on it. Noodles. Soup, huh? Noodle soup. Oh, those are noodles. Noodles? Mrs. Baggy yeah. makes very good chicken soup. Oh. You don't like charity, huh? Look, it cost me $30. For that, I can eat a little. Noodle soup. Noodle soup. <laughs> Come in. Hello, all. Oh, hello, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. I'm uh, sorry to be late, George, but here's my bundle. I, uh... Managed to scrape together some tuxedo studs, a pair of tennis shoes, and a book of Bach fugues arranged for drums, marimba, and sousaphone. <laughs> Where are the other girls? <laughs> other girl? Uh, the other girls at the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Oh, the other girl. <laughs> George, Gracie gave us specific instructions to be here with our bundles at 3 o'clock. But uh, oh, wait a minute, my watch stopped and I wasn't able to... Wait a minute. This was all planned by Gracie? Down to the last detail. Mm. She certainly is clever, George. She makes me proud to be a woman. <laughs> I'm happy, that is. Go on the den and join your sisters. Very well. well go, go, go. Rooked by the uplifters. George, listen. Are you just going to stand there and let those women make a sucker out of you? Now go in there and tell them off. Throw them out of the house. Bill, a fella can get killed in there. <laughs> okay, then I'll do it for you. Gee, would you, Bill? Well, certainly. After all, you're my oldest friend. I am? Well, sure. I got friends I've known longer, but you're the oldest one. <laughs> will you tell them, Bill? Will I tell them? What'll you tell them? <laughs> Make up your mind now. Well, what do you tell them? I'll read them the riot act. Yes. I'll say, now listen, you dames. Yeah. Listen, you miserable, conniving wenches. Nice opening. Yeah, you... <laughs> you call yourselves women? Yeah. I've seen better-looking pans under iceboxes. <laughs> now, clear out before I spray you with DDT. With DDT? Yeah. Attaboy, Bill. Come on in and tell them. Okay. I know what I think. Quiet. Girls. 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 Bill has got something to say to you. Okay, Bill. Chairman. Okay, George. Chairman. Yeah. Now listen, you dames, you. I. Where's that wonderful smell coming from? Oh, from the kitchen, Bill. We're making some coffee. Oh. Now listen, you dames. I. Maxwell House? Well, of course. The riot act, Bill. The riot act. Read it. Read it. Read it. <laughs> it's so rich and delicious and mellow. Yes. We love that famous Maxwell House flavor. Well, Mrs. Morton, that's the result of careful selection and blending of choice Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection. Wenches, Bill, wenches, miserable wenches, remember? Oh, wenches. It's... Miserable. <laughs> it's no wonder more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Oh, you said it, Mrs. Bagley. And they connive, too. Tell them, tell them. Yeah, tell them. yeah, tell them. Girls, Maxwell House is absolutely tops in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. That's right. So much more for so little more. Well, tell them about the pans under the icebox. No tell wonder them. so many men... <laughs> of Americans agree today's coffee buy is Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good... To, to the, the last drop. Now, spray him with DDT, Bill. <laughs> get him. Get him. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Why, you miserable little shrimp. Who? You. Me? Yes. It's an honor to have this group of beautiful intelligent women in your house. Oh, Mr. Goodwin, if I weren't married, I'd hug you. Oh, me too. Me too. I'm single. <laughs> Get out of here, Goodwin. I'll handle this myself. 
Now listen, you dames. I know I've been framed and I want my $30 back. Give me that, Gracie. Why, Gracie, he snatched it right out of your hand. Hmm. George Burns, you want to be thrashed. I wish I were a man. Me too. Me too. So do I. Now, just... <laughs> Don't be too harsh with George. Maybe he has a right about that hat. Well, are you defending that old wrinkle puss? Blanche, please. That old wrinkle puss is my husband. <laughs> Love me. I'm too much of a lady to say what he is, but he's the biggest one I ever saw. Now, you girls stop talking about it. Are you sticking up for this clown with a one-way pocket? Yes, I am. Right or wrong, he's the only husband I've got. Well, I like that. We knock ourselves out trying to help you, and then you start defending him. Oh, don't forget, he's the head of this house. He couldn't be the head of a mouse hole. <laughs> If that's the way you feel, girls, you better leave. Now, think it over, Gracie. If we leave, you are no longer an uplifter. Well, that suits me just fine. If it comes to choosing between my club and my husband, I'll take my husband. Well! Oh, no. <laughs> Get out of here, you old crows. Scoop! My God! Get out of here, you Gracie, I'm proud of you. Well, they can't pick on you. That's my privilege. Believe me... Believe me, I appreciate what you did. And to prove it, here's the $30 for an Easter hat. Oh, thank you, dear. And here's an extra five for calling them old crows. Your old bats, too. <laughs> is that worth another five? You bet it is. Here. I'll go and get the car out of the garage and drive you to the hat shop myself. <sighs> well, that's that. The girls should be under the window by now. Girls. Yes, yes Gracie. Gracie. Our ace in the hole worked like a charm. I got the money back. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, thanks a lot, girls. See you in the Easter parade. <laughs> Join us again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gracie has something very important she'd like to get off her chest. Gracie? There's a chain letter going around called The Luck of London. And this letter claims that I won a large sum of money by not breaking the chain. I would like to say here and now that I have never won anything. In fact, when I receive a chain letter, I tear it up immediately. So please disregard any chain letter which uses my name. Good night. Good night. And now stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Does your spouse grouse? She'll love Instant Maxwell House. It's instant, it's new, it's good to the last drop, too. Yes, trust Maxwell House to make a better instant coffee. Roaster fresh, true coffee flavor. Marvelous true coffee aroma because it's all coffee. Made from America's favorite, the famous Maxwell House blend. And thrifty, a jar of Instant Maxwell House makes fully as much as a pound of regular coffee. Ask for Instant Maxwell House. Rich and mellow. Good to the last drop. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.